Hello my friends, welcome back to another general pick a card reading. It is the end of April, which is wild to me, but if you're watching this at a later date that is totally fine. I'm sure you'll find this reading when you need to. Um, and a few things before we get started. One, you may notice that my reading space is a little blank today. Uh, that is because I'm moving, so I've already packed up the majority of my um, reading stuff, but I kept these out so that I could do today's reading and get that out on the channel for you uh, before the end of the month. So uh, additionally, today's reading is going to be um, a bit <laughs> more blunt, I guess. I don't know. I've I've been going through a lot of changes in my life and sort of like having my perspective shift, which I think is really important for growth. And when I was looking at um, the videos that I've posted over the last year, I noticed that a lot of you guys really liked the um, red flags and how to fix them. So, uh, Honestly, I thought I was, I, I was worried that you guys were gonna think that was a roast or a read or something, so I'm kind of surprised, but at the same time, like, if you're going after that, if you want to know the, the, like, the blunt truth, brutally honest truth, I guess, um, fantastic, especially if you're, like, if you need to hear it from a third party, I totally understand, and, or I guess second party, Anyways, if you need to hear it from another source, I understand, um, and I'm super proud that you're like willing to listen and um, yeah, you're set on like working on yourself because I think that's super important. Um, so today we have three piles and we're going to be investigating what brutally honest truth do you need to hear right now. So we have three piles here. We've got, um, I've already packed up everything, so we're using earrings. So we've got pile one with this little lemon, cute little lemon. Pile two with dat boy, look at him go. And then pile three with this butterfly sucker. So as per usual, feel free to pause and Go through the piles, see which one resonates most. If you already know which pile you're drawn to, feel free to scroll down to the description box below and you'll find the timestamp to bring you to your reading. I'll see you there. Hello, pile one. If you picked the little lemon, lemon grab, then this is your reading. We're gonna set that guy up there. He's so small. <laughs> So today we are going to be pulling some tarot cards first and looking at the brutal, brutal truth, I guess. Um, we're not holding back with this one. You guys really liked the, uh, you really liked the red flags video. So I figured it was about time um, that... I read for you in that way again. Oh my goodness, okay. What have we got? Grab a couple more of these guys. Thank you. just gonna move these guys up a little bit because I will see if I can fit oracle cards on here as well. Um, and before we get started on the reading, I also just wanted to roll a die and see, actually we're gonna roll three dice and see 
what numbers may be important for you. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we've got two fives and one four. I'll bring those close so you can see. So 14 might be important. Um, individually, 554, five, any configuration of those numbers. Maybe it's um, the fifth month, which is May, which we're going into. Um, May 5th, May 4th, May 9th. Um, those might be significant dates. Yeah. Um, 14, one, four, so that reduces to five. And five is the number of change, often unexpected change. So, um, you might have some unexpected change that you're dealing with that you need a little bit of a wake up call about. So getting into the cards, we have temperance in reverse. So um, I think this is definitely a time of um, like whatever this change is, it's created a lot of imbalance in your life and I think this is affecting you in ways that maybe you don't want to uh, acknowledge right now. You're kind of turning a blind eye, convincing yourself that everything's fine and that you're being patient and stuff, but you, um, I think you're setting aside the importance of taking time to heal and realign um, and instead you're, you're piling things on to sort of quell that feeling, um, like that feeling of, uh, the change, I suppose, but the more things you're adding on, the worse that, that overwhelming pressure of change is going to feel for you. So, um, and I think also when you take stuff on, you're really, here comes the read, um, you take on a lot of stuff to basically use that as an explanation of not um, putting time into things. Like if you have a reason or if you have an excuse to not give your all, that's that's tangible that already has like that's already kind of accepted in society people you think people are going to um have an easier time accepting you not giving a hundred percent to whatever you're working on instead of just admitting to yourself and to the other person that you're dealing with stuff internally and it's just you can't work at the capacity that you had pushed yourself to work before. Like, it's just not happening. Um, and that's fine. That's fine. You're going through, like, a lot of changes, especially with two fives. Um, that's a lot. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, we've got, um, a big sense of, like, in balance and sort of this floating state, this, um, like, you're putting too much pressure on yourself to get stuff done, but you've also taken on way too much, is basically what I'm seeing. And I think you have taken things on maybe because you're, like, sort of trying to convince yourself that you can still do it um but you're not considering the disalignment that you're feeling because of these changes um and like one thing that you're gonna have to realize is that no matter what you did in the past 
what you were capable of doing in the past, you continue to evolve as a person and like you are not the person you were even a year ago, like maybe even a month ago, like whatever this change might be, it has maybe it has given you such a shift on perspective and like your own ability to commit to things um and not necessarily in a bad way like I've definitely been there myself but you're you're shifting away from it and you shouldn't beat yourself up for not being able to or willing to like put the energy into um giving a hundred percent to everything you've taken on before so hopefully that makes sense um we're gonna move on so we have the tower card which can be a little scary sometime but um i think with the fives we already kind of knew that there was going to be change unexpected change sudden change even and the tower card is really like telling us uh that more of that is probably coming um so yeah it's it's gonna be chaotic for a while uh which just stresses the point that you are going to have to um <laughs> i don't want to say like give up but you're gonna have to surrender for sure you're gonna have to like just be up front and say i can't do this point blank period you know like you don't need to explain yourself. You just have to look at your responsibilities and figure out which ones you can actually take on, um, which ones you have to, <laughs> uh, and which ones you can delegate for right now because you can't handle it all. And um, it's not fair to your own healing process or maybe even the people involved in whatever responsibilities you've taken on, it's not fair for them to like, you know, have this idea um, that you're gonna get things done at a certain level and then when you don't deliver, like, obviously they'll understand the circumstances like of, oh, I have a lot going on or whatever, but if, you're not honest with yourself about what actually is making things difficult to accomplish right now, it's gonna take longer and longer for you to heal from it. So um, I think the tower might be sort of like this last straw kind of thing that really forces you to have this awakening and realize all the things that just aren't working for you and it doesn't mean they won't work for you in the future but they're just not working for you right now um so you need to figure out a way to like cut those off and take care of yourself just for a while like I'm not saying give it up entirely for the rest of your life like it's fine you're human treat yourself like one you know so we have the ace of swords reverse and this is um this is telling me that you're really not looking at things um too clearly right now you need to get there and i'm sure you will um but you keep clouding your own judgment by keeping yourself busy and that like your um you're creating like a dam of your own uh, thoughts. If you keep busy with other thoughts, you can't think or feel a, like the things that are kind of plaguing you right now. And that's not a healthy coping mechanism. Straight up is not going to be useful you, to you in the long run. And it's just going to prolong and like deepen this sense of chaos in yourself and I think it's going to result in um like kind of affecting your relationships so 
I would not <laughs> recommend holding on to it. Um, yeah, start, like I said earlier, start sort of restructuring what things you have to do um, and maybe just leave it at that. Don't take on any extra things, get what you need to out of the way and commit some time to um, rethinking uh, and like putting things in order, taking time to realign, that kind of stuff. So um, that brings us to the Nine of Swords, also reversed. And this is um, really indicating what you're gonna have to face in terms of your thoughts and emotions when you finally do take this step and start letting go of the things that you've been using to distract yourself from whatever this change is. Um, that chaos, that abrupt shift. Um, and this, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you, it's gonna bring up some really hard feelings to work through. Um, but I have no doubt that you're going to make it through. Like, especially with the um, like five, five, four. I see the five, five as like, this is the change that you're already dealing with that has kind of set you into the state. This five represents the change that's coming up ahead uh, with the tower. And then the four is sort of that like balancing of things. Um, and sort of like this aligning factor and maybe even support. Um, so yeah, you've, you will come out on the other side, um, but it is going to take some time to reflect on the things that you're fearful of. Like, I think you're trying to quell this this feeling of fear and anxiety regarding these changes with the distractions, like I've said. And you're gonna have to look fear in the face. Um, there might also be um, something coming to light uh, sort of like, it's almost, it almost feels like a solution that I think when you figure it out, it's, it's not like, you're not going to figure it out alone. I think someone is going to say something or do something that's going to influence your perspective. Um, or someone may just straight up tell you like this is how you handle it and you're like oh my gosh like why has this been kept a secret from me like why has no one told me this sooner what the heck i feel so like jaded by this like you were kept in the dark on something that was super important to taking care of yourself and like feel those feelings you know like it sucks to kind of learn how to do <laughs> basic self-care late in life but I think like I don't know society doesn't necessarily equip us with the tools to um to unpack emotions a lot of the time um I think we get really comfortable suppressing or like distracting ourselves which like don't feel bad that you're doing that because it's very common like so I, I don't know a single person who has not done this. Um, so yeah, this is going to be like a breakthrough moment for you. Um, and it's going to help you release some of the worry and the tension that you've built up over the course of these unexpected changes. So it's, uh, it's gonna be a bit scary because you're gonna have to like shift a lot of your, um, like how you viewed 
the world, but again, as long as you surrender to it, um, just like <laughs> give up some of the things that you've been using as distractions that you know you're not giving your all to um, and start putting your all into yourself for a while um, because that's the most important thing for you right now. So hopefully that wasn't too harsh, <laughs> but we're gonna get into Oracle cards, which I imagine are gonna be a little bit lighter. Um, but first we're gonna start with um, the Calm Club Oracle. And I really like these cards in terms of like self-growth questions or like reflection questions. Um, I always struggle to open the container though. <laughs> I'll try it from this way, I guess. Nice. So, we'll see what we've got for you. I think I mixed in, yeah, I mixed in some of the extra cards. That's okay, they'll pop out if they need. Okay, we're gonna take this top card. And it is the ocean. So for the ocean, I already feel like this is gonna say something about going with the flow. <laughs> so we've got the ocean here. And it asks, are you feeling deep in thought about something? Do you need help navigating to shore or home? Are you wanting to discover new horizons? Have a sense of being lost or adrift? Is your tide on the way in or out? So I think these questions definitely ask, like, if we consider um, the ocean as water and the element water relates to um, emotion, then, like, considering the depth and stuff of of things and are you allowing yourself to dive deep into what you're experiencing emotionally and when you're in there like this is kind of what I was saying before like do you have someone who's going to help you navigate your way out of out of that depth because sometimes it can be really easy to get all turned around um, but I think the questions of like, are you wanting to discover new horizons? Um, and are you feeling lost and, and that kind of thing? These are really asking you about perspective, which, which way are you looking? You know, are you looking to swim a little deeper? Are you like, are you ready to come to the surface? That kind of thing. Um, and then is your tide on the way in or out? So where is your emotional self directed? Is it outward, um, like purposefully or not so purposefully? Like that would look like you being compassionate to others or like emotionally receptive to others. Or if it's not on purpose, this might look like lashing out or um, just having emotional outbursts and stuff like that. Or are you bringing the tide in where you're, you're letting it settle in your body and you're understanding it and you know, you have that emotional depth inside of you um, sort of taking care of yourself. So just some things to consider. As you're moving forward, I realize this wasn't as much of a roast, <laughs> um, which is fine. You're uh, count yourself as a lucky one. Um, we're gonna pull a few astrological oracle cards, and then actually, I I don't know if I'm feeling these guys today. I think we're gonna switch over to the um, work your light. I feel like we need uh, some light. 
out that yours your reading was particularly harsh. I mean, maybe it was. Maybe maybe it's coming across that way. Um, I'm not sure. Oh, okay. I think this one wanted to come out. Okay. You, the card you got was Unbound. Releasing soul patterns, contracts, and past lives. So, this really says to me, you are, like, breaking free of the patterns that you've kind of developed, um, that sense of like sort of how we're socialized to suppress or like distract ourselves from these deep emotions and um, not necessarily make it other people's problems, but like we're addressing it. We're noticing the, the cycles that aren't necessarily good for us and we're breaking them we're releasing ourselves from um the expectation or um we're kind of unlearning the negative habits of how we handle emotion when we're overwhelmed so i think also this card especially the aspect of past lives is indicating your um your break away from how you once viewed the world to this new um new perspective and that's sort of like coming through with what i said earlier in the tarot cards where someone is going to like reveal something to you that's that you're gonna be like what the heck why have i never seen or like why have i never thought of it this way so that's what i'm seeing with that card we're gonna finish this reading off with a roomy oracle card. I feel like these have a lot of supportive <laughs> advice. So let's see what we get for you. Oh, okay. That was fast. So we have the dissolving light. Why should I fear anything? When was I ever less by dying? Not literally dying. <laughs> There is something unworthy of you that must be released. Give up the fears and doubts, the belief that somehow things are not going to work out. You are meant to be free in a way that only truth can provide. So this is exactly what I've been saying is like, you've taken on way more than you need to. And you've got to, you've got to release that, you know, give up the fears and the, the turmoil and all those like, kind of icky feeling feelings and like all those fears and doubts and this idea that like you're not going to be able to handle it when you actually look at what the emotional side of things is it is okay to feel and you are going to come out of it so like that's kind of this idea of the dying it's it's like metaphorical metaphysical kind of dying like this this old version of yourself is dying out so that this new version can sort of like come into play it's um that's reincarnation but like you're just in one incarnation so um but yeah uh you are meant to be free in a way that only truth can provide so i think this is indicating that whatever this secret um, is that's going to be revealed to you, it's going to set you free in a lot of ways. Not necessarily like just the, the one way you might be thinking of in terms of your situation currently. But um, yeah, the, the biggest read for you I have in this, um, this quick spread is that you are distracting yourself more than you are healing yourself and that distraction is not going to serve you anything it's just going to prolong things for you so you need to really think about the way that you've structured how you take care of your emotional self and sort that out <laughs> so that is what i'm seeing for you group one thank you so much for letting me read for you and I would really appreciate it if you leave a comment letting me know sort of what resonate, 
what resonates um, or just give me a thumbs up, I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much and I'll see you next month. Bye. Hi group two, if you picked the pile with debt boy, this is your reading. <laughs> I love that little guy. Oh, my dice are rolling off my lap. Okay, oh my gosh, okay. You know what? We're gonna set these aside. We're gonna shuffle some cards um, and look at the um, brutal honest truth that you need to hear right now, group two. Because I feel like we've got a lot of, of like universal shifts going on. And uh, yeah, we, it's good to like go in and know what you're getting into or, you know, um, what you might not necessarily be conscious of or I don't know. Sometimes if you're like subconsciously ignoring something or you don't want to deal with something, you just need um, a third party to point it out to you. It's all right. That's why we have therapists. Not saying I'm a therapist. Definitely don't like replace therapy with tarot readings, especially general tarot readings. But <laughs> Okay, Temperance Reverse really wants to come out for everybody, so. Ooh. Oh my goodness, okay. I'm gonna move these boys up. I'm cutting off that boy's head. There we go. Okay, we'll grab a couple more cards. Uh, and then I'll actually roll the dice. I know they were so eager to come out earlier, but oh my goodness. And one more for you. not pulling as many cards today um but I feel like the reading is still super long like the first pile was like 26 minutes or something like that so maybe we're going in depth a little <laughs> okay oh my goodness everybody's so nervous everybody's so worried about stuff going on right now it's okay all right, let's get, let's get into it. Ah, uh, right, the dice. <laughs> okay, so we've got two fives and a two. My goodness, okay, everybody's going through some mass changes right now, really unexpected changes. Like, I'm not surprised given what's going on with the planets and everything. Um, I know if you're, you've got like heavy Scorpio or Taurus placements, um, like myself, woo, uh, <laughs> you're getting super affected by what's, uh, like by eclipse season. Um, so I feel for you. <laughs> um, I know what you're going through. Well, I mean, I don't know what you're going through, but I can relate. So, okay. Um, Fives are all about change, unexpected change. So with two fives, I am feeling like there's a couple unexpected changes that are kind of going on right now. Um, and uh, it's interesting because even in pile one, we had five, five, four which is like um i was looking at it as balance and then for this one we have five five two which is also like kind of balance um but with two i picture like a couple so this might indicate some changes 
um, relating to your relationship, um, partnerships, just general relationships with other people. So, um, yeah, something to consider as we go through. You might be with uh, somebody or, you know, there might be changes in, in your situation, like, uh, within your relationship or things that influence your relationship or this could be an indication that um, your partner is someone who helps you through um, whatever these changes are which is really lovely to have you've got a support system there so um, otherwise these numbers could indicate dates or um, specific like I don't know, maybe it's relating to an address, but you have um, 12, the number 12 might be important, which um, reduces to the number three. So uh, <laughs> if we're considering that in terms of numerology, um, three represents creativity and communication. Um, as well as like sort of an optimistic viewpoint um yeah it's it's definitely a positive after a lot of uh abrupt changes but this may uh have to do with months so the month of may is actually the fifth month so we could have may um seventh wow <laughs> um yeah may 7th maybe important um may 25th perhaps could also be an important date for you um otherwise this could be sort of a projection into the future uh where it's like october uh october 2nd maybe um something's booked for october um or like there's a change that's coming in october something like that um Yeah, so, okay, we're gonna get into the cards now and um, sort of unpack what you need to hear right now. Um, sorry if it comes off a little bit brutally honest. Uh, pile one, I, I was surprised at how tame it was, but we'll see. So the Three of Cups reversed. This is um, normally upright. This talks about friendship um and celebration and stuff but i think with the uh three of cups reversed especially with the fives up ahead i think there's going to be changes in terms of your circle in terms of your friend group and the people that you relate with this could be um a falling out with certain people that you held really close or just the parting of ways your um you're letting go of some connections that may or may not serve you anymore um and it's just part of life but it can be really jarring um this might this might push you into a period of life where you spend more time alone you feel a little bit more isolated um and uh yeah, I think um, on the flip side, this could be uh, that you are putting too much time and energy into um, your friendships. Uh, that sounds weird, but basically what I'm saying is you are spending time with your friends rather than doing things that you necessarily need to get done. It's kind of like procrastinating through other people or, you know, you're kind of like distracting yourself and realizing that you don't like being alone with yourself. Um, so you surround yourself with other people because you like who you are, who you put on as yourself when you're with others. So um, yeah, this may be an indication that you need to really consider whether or not you enjoy your own company and take the time to um, sit with yourself and 
figure out who you are and, you know, work on whether or not um, there are things that you want to change about yourself to feel more comfortable being you on your own time. Um, so that's a bit of a toughie. Um, definitely sit with that. She wanted a little bit. We do have temperance in reverse, which we saw in the first reading as well. So um, there might be some things in the first reading that relate to you. So if you were drawn to that pile as well, feel free to check on it. Um, but yeah, so temperance in reverse, you are um, facing some uh, disruptive experiences uh, and this might I feel like for a lot of you this is going to come from an internal place like you just don't feel like aligned with yourself anymore um, especially like with all of these changes you know perspectives change experience um, can sort of change your worldview a little bit so yeah we've got um we've got a need for some self-healing so i really think like taking the time to get to know yourself in this new structure of the changes is going to be really really crucial for you and you need to set time aside specifically for that like it is very important so um also with temperance reverse especially since we were talking about like you um maybe spending a, a lot of time with people to um not be your authentic self um watch the the amount of like excess excess rather uh that you take on um whether it's like just social stuff, finances, um, substances, that kind of stuff. Like you might be taking on a lot more than you can necessarily manage um, in order to be the kind of person you think others expect of you rather than being authentically yourself and like getting to know yourself and allow yourself to grow in ways that you think are like they're aligned with your higher self who you want to become um because that person is inside of you uh <laughs> but anyways uh so we have justice in reverse so this card um i think if you did have a, a falling out with someone that we saw um as like a potential in the three of cups reversed i think you are going to be combing through and maybe realizing like some of the things um that <clears throat> weren't working in that relationship um yeah i feel like this is it's gonna be kind of jarring you're gonna realize all the times that um there was kind of a lack of accountability or <clears throat> this person wasn't entirely being honest with you or kind of cutting corners there's just like yeah you you feel a bit um I forget if I used the word jaded earlier but you're you're kind of realizing like all of these ways that maybe you were taken advantage of um before or you know you you didn't like the person that you became and then coming out of it you kind of realized like how your proximity to someone else may have impacted how you viewed yourself um and just realized all the ways that you weren't being fair or compassionate to yourself or maybe even to the other person you know like this falling out could also like you you could share the blame um so it's important if you're going to work on yourself and like take that time to um 
put effort into becoming the person you want to be, you're gonna have to look at the flaws and sort of the mistakes that you made in that friendship or relationship or whatever it is, that connection with another person and work on growing from it. So to finish off, we've got two swords cards, both in reverse. We've got the Knight of Swords in reverse. And I, I get the feeling that you really burnt out <laughs> um, because of everything, like all the changes and stuff that you've experienced, uh, whether that be with friends or um, just little things uh, in your day-to-day -day life that have changed due to unforeseen circumstances. Um, and you're a bit restless. You want things to um, be calm again. You want things to kind of revert back to a quote-unquote normal um, so that you can like take a breath. And I think because um, there's such a strain on you mentally as you're kind of like grappling with these changes, you're noticing that you're um, less focused on accomplishing things um, and you might get more distracted or start forgetting things a little bit more. You might act more impulsively. Um, and like, I don't think this is going to create lasting damage or anything. Um, but I think you are going to notice it in yourself and you're gonna kind of get pissed at yourself, which is again, very normal. Like it's normal to get frustrated when you're kind of like spread too thin. Um, but definitely like take that as a sign that you need to take better care of yourself because that's exactly what it is. Like you're crossing your own boundaries and that's why you're getting kind of angry and frustrated um, and you, you could lash out. But ultimately I think like you're, um, you're at your wits end <laughs> in a lot of ways when it comes to like your relationships with other people because you've kind of been burned um, from this experience and there's probably some things that you regret in how it went down and like it's okay to kind of feel crappy about it um, but you can't feel pity. Um, don't pity yourself. I, I shouldn't say you can't feel pity. I mean like you're welcome to the emotion I guess if you can consider pity an emotion but like don't let that be the thing that consumes you because there is a lot that you can do especially with the nine of swords in reverse this is like the encouragement to face those deep fears that you might hold about yourself and like who you are as a person based on this experience and you're gonna have to confront sort of the dark sides of yourself like there's no easy way to put it like you're gonna have to look at the good the bad and the ugly so it's it's gonna be a bit of a a bumpy ride for a bit and I'm not saying that it's easy because it's it can be really difficult speaking from experience to look at the sides of yourself that aren't necessarily um they just need growth you know like they're a little underdeveloped so um taking the time to look at those aspects of yourself and um release worry this card also talks about secrets which i think feeds into the justice reverse card talking about um dishonesty and um sort of like this idea of keeping things so there may have been like some words exchanged or um yeah just it, it doesn't look like a good situation if you are leaving a friendship like know that this is good for you because it doesn't seem like a lot of positive energy is coming from whatever this connection was um 
otherwise this could be uh, a reflection of like you being dishonest with yourself or you keeping the truth of, of the situation sort of locked down, not wanting to look at it too closely because you're afraid of what it says about yourself. So, okay, <laughs> now that we've cut in a little, we're gonna look at um, some Calm Club cards and see what, uh, what questions are important to ask yourself right now in this situation. So, just grab one card for you. Oh, okay, we're gonna take this guy. So we have the star. So for the star, it says, let me grab it. There we go, okay. The star says, are you shining your brightest at the moment? Could you do with a light in the darkness? Where do you see your place in this world? Who are you looking for? Who are you looking to for guidance? Who surrounds you in your galaxy? So I think this is really calling into action, the calling into action, calling out the importance of who you have in your life, who is influencing you, who is supporting you, what kind of energy are they bringing in? And does this align with the kind of person you see yourself as? Because you do become like the five people you spend the most time with. So I think it is really important to consider the kind of energy and how those people make you feel because you're absorbing that energy. Could you do it with a light in the darkness? I think it's going to be important to have support from people. Um, but I think the value of understanding yourself in your, like when you're alone is also going to be really pivotal for you. I think also, okay, this just came to me. Um, one of like, one of the things that is important in terms of your relationships to others is a huge aspect, like your relationship to past versions of yourself. Mending some of those bridges um, is going to be really important for you because it's going to offer you sort of like um, this underground way of healing. Um, where do you see your place in this world? This is really asking you to consider who you want to become. Um, and I, I find it like kind of cheesy that, um, that saying of like, uh, picture your best, best self and then show up as them. But, um, that's kind of the vibe. <laughs> that's kind of the vibe of this card. So all things to consider. And we're going to pull a work your light oracle. I'm like speeding through my camera battery is dying. It always dies. I, I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm gonna have to charge it before pile three, but whoop. <sighs> Okay. Mirror, who or what is triggering you? So I think one of the things that is important to consider in terms of like this friendship and the abrupt change in terms of like your relationship to other people or um, just like your distraction from yourself with other people is to consider the ways in which um, you might be projecting onto others uh, or you might like notice the things that kind of annoy you or piss you off with someone in your circle and you're like angry with them for doing something but it's actually just you um seeing yourself in them and seeing a part of yourself that you don't necessarily like um so 
we talked about like having compassion for different versions of yourself and this is kind of where that comes in because you are on a learning journey so um yeah confronting yourself and like going deep into those fears is going to um help you to understand the ways in which your reflection in others hurts you Okay, and last but not least, we're gonna pull a roomy card. Oh, there we go. So look at how pretty. So it says, divine discontent. Winter falls upon us so spring can bring new growth. What was prized and treasured is now found to be plated, not the precious gold it was esteemed to be. Look beyond what is. There is a true feast meant for you, not a meager meal. Allow your hungry-hearted soul to lead you towards the banquet table. So I think um, this is kind of showing that you... As if my camera died on <laughs> the last card in this, in this pile. Um, okay, so to finish off your reading with Divine Discontent, um, this is really asking you to look at um, the things that you've kind of had to face in terms of change, and this may have to do with your friendship, circles, relationship, that kind of thing, um, and realize that they weren't that good. <laughs> um, you're gonna start to see things a little more, there we go, a little more clearly once you're out of it, and sort of the things that may have once been enchanting to you or like reasons to stay, within this uh connection you're gonna be like oh my gosh this this is like fool's gold kind of thing and there are much better um connections that i can form but you do need to um work on that connection with yourself first so um yeah i think once you're coming out of it you're realizing all the ways that you may have um, become emotionally exhausted, um, given too much of yourself or expected too much of someone else, you know, like you're examining your flaws as well. And you're maybe realizing like how needs weren't being met on both sides and you need to restore that. So that is now your responsibility to do for yourself. So you can't expect someone else to provide that for you if you don't know what it looks like. And the only way to know what um, it looks like to have your needs fulfilled is to do it for yourself. And then you'll be able to more easily recognize what that feels like when someone else provides it. And I think that'll make you... Um, develop more strong relationships. Stronger relationships, I guess, is the better way of phrasing that. So that is what I'm seeing. So glad uh, <laughs> it cut off like three minutes before I was done the reading. But thank you so much for letting me read for you today. Um, if you have any questions uh, or this really resonated with you, I'd love to hear it in the comments below. And I'd really appreciate if you could um, like the video and su subscribe if you want uh, regular videos like this every month. All right, thank you. Bye. Hello, group three. If you picked the butterfly sucker, then this is your reading. Um, today, if you skip the intro, no worries, it's fine. Um, <laughs> we are talking about um, what brutally honest truth do you need to hear right now? I know we've been going through a lot of changes recently, um, kind of abrupt changes. It's been a lot of like chaotic energy I find um, for me personally. Maybe you're not feeling the same way, but I, I feel like a lot of people are going through changes, um, expected and unexpected. So I figured we might be blind to some of the things that might be important. And um, yeah, we might be a little distracted by everything that's going on or overwhelmed. And sometimes we just need someone, we need that friend to be like, hey, 
this is how it is. <laughs> so, got a few more cards for you. And I also am going to use the dice in uh, this reading. I feel like it's been a while since I've used them, so. Ooh. We're getting so many reverse cards in all the readings. So. Hello. There we go. Okay. And let's roll the dice. Interesting. We've got three, three, and two. We've got a lot of doubles happening. Um, so with um, threes, three is all about communication and sort of a positive outlook, which is really nice going into this. Um, and then when we have the number two, it often relates to partnerships and our relationships with other people. Um, if we're looking at combos, we've got um, five, technically, if you take one, three, and two. We've got six. Um, and six is all about, like, um, sort of coming to a stable place. We've got eight, six, seven, eight. <laughs> I'm really bad at math, so yes, I do have to count. Um, so, yeah, the number eight is associated to um, your inner self, your inner world, that sense of confidence, authority, like really stepping into your own, um, understanding yourself as well. So. Uh, this could also indicate a month, um, like the month of June, June 2nd, because the sixth month is June. Um, this could indicate the eighth month, which is August. So maybe the summer has uh, some things in store for you. potentially changes, but, um, I feel like there could be some moments over the summer that things are put into perspective and you're like, oh shoot, like, I needed this, <laughs> I needed this, um, I guess, third party perspective on myself in a way. <laughs> so yeah, let's, let's get into your cards. Okay. So for your tarot, we're going to start over here. We have the nine of wands in reverse. So, um, this has to do a lot, like wands cards have to do with, um, action usually like putting things into motion, um, your creative side, that kind of thing, your passions. Um, it's often associated with the fire signs, so Aries, Sagittarius, and Leo. Um, you don't have to be one of those signs, but, you know, it might factor in. Um, so with the Nine of Wands in reverse, I'm seeing some... Um, Hmm. I'm seeing that you have like a lot of stuff that's available to you to like help you um, overcome things or grow and um, really step into your power, but you're not necessarily um, you're not necessarily using them to the best of your. Uh, potential. Um, I think you're actually struggling to accept that help um, or accept like those resources from outside things. You think that it should come from an internal place and 
like, I don't doubt that you have some internal resources as well, but I think um, you might be uh, defensive when other people offer resources, uh, especially if it's resources that you have already. Like, if you, um, if you feel like you can do it on your own, you might get defensive when someone offers something to you that you feel like you don't need support with. Um, but it doesn't make you a failure to still take that on. Like, you can take that uh, so you don't spread yourself too thin or bite off more than you can chew kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I think you're a, a little bit defensive when it comes to um oh my gosh I have like not a fully formed thought yet but basically like <sighs> you're struggling because of how many things are going on at once you might be overwhelmed in terms of like your emotions sorting things out and um this might make you sort of read into things a little bit more. Um, yeah, and I see that coming out in defensiveness, which could uh, potentially affect those relationships, but it's also coming through as a sense of like, hypervigilance, I think. You're, you're going above and beyond and you're spending too much energy worrying about the things that could happen and um i think you've put a lot of guards up and you're like highly suspicious of of people um and you're kind of like blocking off um the potential of getting to know people on a deeper level because you have this idea of um like what you can accomplish on your own you're kind of like i don't need anybody else and like i don't doubt that you're a very independent accomplished person um but nobody can do it alone uh don't take that as a challenge um <laughs> what i'm saying is like you are so focused on the things that you know that you're capable of that you don't even allow people in you um, are probably highly suspect of people's intentions when it comes to helping you. Um, and that could come from like your own history and experience and stuff. So I don't blame you for that. Um, but I think it's important for you to like consider that, um, even though people have like shared resources, like inner resources, they might go about it in different ways and there's always like ways that you can kind of learn from others. So yeah, you're being a little bit closed off, um, but I get it, you know? Um, I think you're, you're kind of retreating inward. You're, like I said, closing yourself off. You're withdrawing from certain relationships. You might be, um, this might be a form of uh, punishment almost. Like, uh, I don't want to say unintentionally, but like subconsciously. Um, I think there might be something that you haven't necessarily healed from and you're annoyed with yourself that you haven't healed from it yet. So you think you need to punish yourself by closing yourself off um, and like taking care of it on your own. Maybe even because you have always needed to do that or you're under the impression that you need to do that. Um, so yeah, we've got um, the nine of pentacles in reverse. So this I think is an indication that um, your ideas are swarming over um, sort of the same thing. You're intent on working quickly 
and you feel like others are going to kind of weigh you down. Um, sorry if you can hear my cat squeaking in the background. Um, but yeah, you're, you're putting too much effort into like solo healing uh, when you really need to open up and Oh my gosh, you're so noisy, Faustus. Um, <laughs> you want to come up and see me? Uh, yeah, you're putting a lot of your attention on yourself and that work and uh, your expectations of yourself in terms of your healing process. And I don't really think that's beneficial for you. Like, it's important to set time aside to heal. Um, what is with you? Um, but, yeah, you're, like, <sighs> consider the things that you truly value in terms of your relationship to yourself, and then consider the things that you value in your relationships to other people. Because right now, there's some, um, like I said before, some punishment happening where you're removing yourself from those people um, who are there to support you and not necessarily offer you their inner resources but help you to like better understand your own inner resources based on their experience. So having like open conversations, like the three indicates communication, um, that's, that's where you're gonna do like a lot of natural learning, whereas being closed off and withdrawing and then forcing yourself to undergo this this solitary work it will get you somewhere but it's not going to get you to the the point that i think you're hoping to get at and if you keep going this way you're just gonna get more and more pissed off with yourself because you're like oh why can't i do this you know so um with the Six of Cups also in reverse, got a lot of reverse, we've got um, this idea of forgiveness. So I think whatever um, you're kind of going through in your own mind right now that you want to work on in yourself, you, the like one of the first steps is forgiving yourself because you're being way too hard on yourself. And for what? Like, really, what is that going to do? Have you ever accomplished something? <laughs> um, or, like, have you ever bullied yourself into being better? Or to, like, bully yourself into this point where um, you feel like... <sighs> what am I trying to say? Like... You can't bully yourself into happiness. It's not gonna work. It's gonna do the opposite. Like, maybe you'll change your patterns because you feel this pressure from yourself that's kind of rooted in um, not so good feelings about yourself and potentially like insecurity. And you're not gonna feel fully yourself while becoming uh this new version um i hope that makes sense but uh yeah i think you're you're also kind of holding on to um the kind of situations that you've done in the past like things you've overcome in the past like i was saying you may have had to deal with things on your own or relied on yourself to get through certain things. Um, and you're kind of stuck in that mentality, which is why you like so forcibly reject um, your, your access to other people's um, resources and support. And you prefer to like isolate and withdraw. So you need to let go of that and allow yourself some ease like loosen your grip up on how you think you're supposed to go about this situation 
because um, ultimately like the way you're structuring things right now is not going to benefit you in the long run. It's going to kind of exhaust you and your nervous system, I think. So definitely switch up your thinking on that <laughs> because I think you're going to see a lot more growth when you start um, making connections with other people in those ways where you can kind of um, find similarities, like not necessarily have them do things for you, but like they're going to open your eyes to new, new ways of going about things, I think. So at the end of this row, we have the Four of Swords, and this guy is upright. So this is really an encouragement of um, building yourself back up. So I think you've done a lot of negative self-talk. And you have worked really friggin' hard at tearing yourself down for every little thing. And... It's it's gonna freaking suck to to acknowledge that that has not gotten you anywhere productive, um, but with the sense of forgiveness from the six of cups reversed and the emphasis on rest and like rebuilding yourself with the four of swords, like this is how you're going to build yourself back up. That sense of compassion. Um, taking time to release these negative cycles and patterns and stuff like that is, it's gonna change your world a lot. And I think also once you actually open up and start communicating with other people, um, you're going to start contemplating the ways in which your, um, Maybe your inner child or like past versions of yourself struggled um, to have their needs met. And you're, you're reaching a point where you're realizing the ways in which you can now fulfill those needs for your previous self. Um, so yeah, I highly encourage you to, to consider like maybe even um, like role play talking to your younger self, write a letter to your younger self even, um, like a, a letter of forgiveness, or you could, you know, write from both sides, like sort of dish it all out, um, allow yourself to, to live in the presence of your past self, get out your frustrations on the page, and then write a letter back as your present self, um, or even your, your higher self, um, to kind of heal that relationship, communicate in a different way to kind of resolve those problems and unpack some of those cycles that have been repeating through your life and just aren't serving you. Okay, so we're gonna grab a card uh, from the Calm Club Oracle, this little guy, and we're gonna see what questions it asks of you um, for this for this reading. There we go. So we've got the fire. I think everybody's got from the blue uh, set. So the fire asks, have you found your torch through the darkness? Is there something to set a light in your life? Have certain things been illuminated of late? Have you learned not to play with fire? Do you feel the warmth of others? So I think this is uh, really bringing us back to like the um, 
what I said earlier about the fire signs and stuff. Um, so, ow, that's <laughs> really interesting that the fire card came out. Um, cause I think this is the only reading that I emphasized the signs. So there might be a fire sign in your life that is going to bestow some knowledge, uh, on your situation. Um, but yeah, these questions really frame like your connection to other people and like the warmth and receptiveness and like that sense of compassion, um, from others and whether or not you're opened up to it like um and in terms of like playing with fire this this negative idea of like getting burned i think through the reading it's pretty evident that you are the one kind of burning yourself i'm gonna move this that is so bright with the sun sorry if you can hear cars in the background um but yeah, I think you've you've burned yourself a lot um, to try and get better, but like every time you burn yourself, you are just taking like it's gonna take longer to heal, you know. So it's not a productive way to build yourself into the person you want to become. Um, is there something set alight in your life? So is there something that, I guess this goes along with a, like what's being illuminated, what is calling your attention, what, how, like what is going to come to light basically. And I think once you open up communication, you make the effort to open yourself up to that instead of withdrawing, um, you like a lot of things are gonna have light shed on them so you just have to be open to it um because i i honestly do think your connection to other people is going to be what lights the way out of this um this cycle for you so we're gonna pull a work your light oracle card oh that was fast we have leap you go first, the universe will catch you. So this card is really about trust. And I think um, there's a, a bit of a, a lack of trust when it comes to your relationship with others, your relationship to yourself. Um, you don't believe in yourself in a lot of ways. Um, and it, it it makes you not uh, want to take risks or move forward or um, maybe even not want to like put too much time or energy into your passions and instead focus. Like uh, I have this idea, it just came to me, of um, this idea that you have to work on yourself in order to like reach a point where you feel worthy of love. Um, and it doesn't have to be like romantic love. It could be platonic. How did this flip over? Did the card hit it? Oh my gosh. Okay, we're also gonna take that into consideration. It rolled over to a one. Um, so that's a, a signifier of new beginnings, of individuality. Um, so yeah, I think um, if there's a new beginning that you want to start in terms of like a creative endeavor, a job, um, that kind of thing, the universe is saying like, take that leap, do it because, um, it's, it seems to be part of your journey. Um, and I think like, especially with the one, the three and the two, um, You've got your sense of individuality um, and new beginnings. And I think you're really gonna understand yourself um, over time, especially with the number three signifying communication and the number two, which signifies partnerships and your relationship to others. So those are three components that are coming together for you um, 
but you have to be the one to take the first step. And I think once you do, no matter how small that step is, you're gonna start seeing things sort of unravel in a positive way and you're gonna be like, okay, like, yeah, this is what I, like, this is what I was afraid of in terms of the unknown and now it's like becoming more known and it's for the positive so it's not as scary. Um, so finally we're gonna pick a roomy oracle card and finish off your reading. I don't know if this was necessarily like a roast, <laughs> but um, yeah, you'll have to let me know if it resonated in the comments below. Um, and I'd really appreciate if you could uh, like the video or subscribe if you want more content um, or just to be notified of more content. So the card that you got is this little guy and it says the right choice not every eye has vision not every sea contains pearls when you are drawn away from a tantalizing sweet shop trust that there is more delicious array there is a more delicious array of confectionery just around the corner yes you have yes have your tantrum if you must but you will be sheepish when you realize the hand that removes is the same great hand of the beloved that bestows even greater gifts so yeah, I think with this card, it's a reminder that if you're focusing too much on the things that um, you can't necessarily have um, or the things that don't come easy and you're like pulling back, you're punishing yourself for them, um, you're kind of denying yourself the access to things that are going to elevate you. So there's there's something great around the corner, but if you continue to shut off, shut down, you're not gonna see it, you know? You're like heading home uh, after you see the first um, like sweet shop and you can't get anything in there, you know? You're like, oh, well, that's it. There's no other sweet shops anywhere near me but there's one like right around the corner but if you don't like put yourself out there you're not gonna see it so um yeah and the the idea of the right choice and like moving ahead even though you can't necessarily see uh the next stop is that leap that leap of faith so that is what i'm seeing for you group three. Thank you so much for letting me read for you. I really appreciate any feedback uh, that you give here or on my Instagram. Um, and if you would like to set up a private reading with me to explore things a little more personally, you are more than welcome to. I know these are general readings, so not everything may resonate, but I truly appreciate you uh, for watching and listening. I'll see you next time. Bye!